So sometimes things don't sprout where you plant them. And so we're going back today and we're gonna be reseeding different patches. Um, one of the reasons we didn't have things sprout is we used some old seed in a few places, which we kind of expected some of the beans not to come up. Um, in our backyard, we had planted some sunflower seeds and then the chickens helped themselves to all of the seeds. So we're gonna replant some of those. We have some corn patches that we're gonna replant. We also were using some old seed in there as well. So we're just gonna go and replant things today. I know y'all want it. But these sunflower seeds are not for you. I'm gonna plant a lot of them just in case y'all get in here. Yeah, I see y'all watching. Well, we came to replant things, but it also looks like we're going to have to set up our trellises again. We had a very breezy day, we had some thunderstorms come through, so we're going to have to figure out how to get these to stand up through the wind. our first one on the cucumbers, so we're going to smush them. Yeah. So this is the type of damage that that bug does. And really there's not any like, if you're going to be organic, there's no way to just get rid of them other than manually taking them off and smushing them and looking under the leaves periodically to see if you can find the eggs before they hatch. So if you happen to have a Mexican bean beetle issue, the eggs look like little yellow dots and they usually like to lay them on the underside of the leaf and as they continue to grow uh, you'll get these little teeny tiny grub looking things that have black horns those are the larvae so if you see those it's also good to exterminate them as well one way to get rid of the eggs is to actually just take some duct tape wrap it around your finger and stick it to itself so that the sticky side is out and then you just simply roll it onto the eggs and that'll get all those eggs to stick to that which then you can just throw it in the trash can and you're good to go Look at those onions! It's only been a week and look how bulbed up they are! Look at that! Biggest I've ever grown an onion! Amazing! That's exciting! You're not drying out on the tops yet though. You might have more time to grow then. Yeah, okay. that'll be nice. Time to see how big we can get them. Looks like our garlic is just about ready to pull. Look at that big one. So if you're growing a hard neck variety of garlic, will create what's it's almost looking like a flower head at the top these are called garlic scapes and if your goal is to produce a nice big bulb it's best to pinch those off as that will channel the energy rather than going towards this head back down to the root so you just simply pinch it off and those you can actually eat they're excellent in stir fries you can wilt them on the stove top or add them to soups for add additional flavor i like the purple top Oh, you're gonna take all of them with you? Guess so. Quite the clump. Wow. Very healthy. Are those all. That's a good question. One plant? Or is it. This... There's two? There's three of them. Weird. That's not witch's broom. That's like three garlics. Mm hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, we have some gaps here where we had done some bush beans. So we're going to be planting in those gaps to hopefully have a few more bush bean plants underneath our bean trellis.
So I accidentally wire weeded one of our Arnica plants out last week and we had one left over that hadn't sold. So I'm very glad I had kept this one and I planted over here and hopefully it'll thrive and not get eaten by slugs. Look at that happy earthworm. Beautiful. As you can see, we have a couple gaps in our corn here. So we're going to stick a few more seeds in some of the gaps to hopefully make up for poor germination. And having a nice tight stand of corn will also help hold the corn together. For if you have get too many gaps and you get a strong wind, it will actually blow some of the stalks over, which makes it a lot harder to both harvest, but also decreases the ear size later on. As you can see, we have quite a few gaps, even though I planted a lot of sunflower seeds over here. So I'm going to wire hoe to get some of the grass out and then plant some more sunflowers. So if we have a good patch here. So we're about to wrap up over here in our garden plot this evening. It looks like the rain might be coming back that we had earlier today. So we'll be coming back over here probably tomorrow evening to finish up pulling some weeds and generally cleaning up the garden this week. So it did indeed rain on us last night. It actually, we had some quite the gusts. We had a severe thunderstorm warning. So we're glad we left a little early yesterday. So we're back. We're gonna check on our garden, make sure nothing fell over with the 50 plus mile per hour gusts and continue weeding. Well, the storm definitely uh, took out our borage plant, so it is no more. So this one got knocked over in the storm. Look at that. Take a look at those beans. They really soaked up that rain last night and climbed in the sunny day today. Uh, organic fish bones. Smells like fish. Mm -hmm. OMRI, certified organic. But what's nice about this is it's a water soluble form of nitrogen, so it gives it a really quick uh, accessibility to that. But it also has a great availability of phosphorus. So this is great for tomatoes, corn, peppers. You could do this on your okra or eggplants. And it should really help with both the leafy green growth, but also uh, helping with the fruit production. Well, that is it for tonight. Thank you for joining us at our urban farmstead here. 
It has been a joy just to continue to watch things grow, especially after that rain last night and then the sunshine this morning. It just seems like everything explodes. Unfortunately, including the weeds, but we continue to pick away at that. And one thing that we found helpful is attacking it by zones. It can be, be very overwhelming otherwise to view the garden as a whole and be like, oh my goodness, all these weeds have to be taken out. But if you separate it into quadrants, maybe just uh, into five pieces, for instance, and weed one section every day for uh, Monday through Friday, let's say, then it's a lot more manageable. Well, we hope your garden is thriving as well and happy growing.